I just feel like a joke today, honest to God. Like, this is just, this, this ain't life. This ain't even real. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. The morning isn't starting off that great, but y'all know I'm trying to keep a positive attitude. I am at IAH Airport in Houston, Texas, trying to commute back to New York because I have a four day trip starting tomorrow evening. And y'all know I like to commute in the day before. I'm not the day of commuter, like I can't, that's stressful. I woke up late, so I was rushing to get to the airport, had to drop off the rental car, forgot to put gas in the rental car, so now I'm gonna be charged a crazy amount for gas then get to the um, KCM and I got randoms and random means that instead of just being able to show your bag and roll through you got to go through pre-check and you know just the regular line all that that shabazz Ugh. and then I get to the gate finally after wasting an extra like 15 minutes or so because of KCM get to the gate and the gate agent was just mean and would not let me list because I was one minute late for listing. So I missed the 6 a.m. flight, which is really the only flight that I had the best chances of getting on. So headed to the next gate to see what happens. Okay. Attention on the concourse. Attention on the concourse. So United has a 6.55 a.m. flight. It's fully booked, booked to capacity, no empty seats, with eight people listed. So I'm gonna go try my luck there. Sounds crazy, but you just never know. Like, people miss their flights all the time, whatever the case may be. So I may luck up, fingers crossed. The 6.55 a.m. flight did not work to my benefit at all. It was completely full. I was number eight listed for that flight and only one person, well, two people were able to get on the flight. There's another guy, a pilot that works for my airline. He was able to get on because pilots have a different agreement with the other airlines that they can actually fly in the flight deck with the pilots in the jump seat. We cannot do that with other airlines. So with our specific agreement, we're commuting on another airline to get back to base or get home or to get anywhere. We have to fly in the regular customer seats. We don't have the ability to sit in the jump seat we can only sit in the jump seat on our own specific airline so two people were able to get on it was the one girl listed right before me she was by herself so she got the seat before i did which was a little bit of a bummer but i'm i'm trying to stay positive here so now i'm at another gate this is the 8:05 a.m flight it's actually boarding right now completely full again um 13 people listed and i am number 13. <laughs> but i'm flying alone so that does work to my benefit because if it was me and another person and we were trying to get on the same flight you know these flights you're really taking chances you'll probably look up a one seat and people you know usually don't want to split up so they'll probably say oh i'll try to get the next one and then that means i can get on so i'm just sitting here right now hoping that somebody gets stuck in TSA or at a red light <laughs> oh that's not nice but it's the truth I gotta get to work y'all so we'll see what happens so I also have the option of going to a smaller airport in Houston but that's like 40 minutes away from here that's the airport that my company flies into we have one flight a day from Houston to New York and it leaves at 11 a.m. and I just checked the loads for that and it's completely full also but I would have better chances of getting on that flight because one like I was just saying I can list for the jump seat um, and I could possibly get that so I've already listed for the flight it's just for me now to decide like do I want to try to find my way to that airport and take those chances you know because I mean it's 7:30 now um, if I go over there for 11 o'clock and don't get on that flight, and if I don't get on, then there really isn't, I think Southwest might have a few flights, but Southwest is always full. So yeah, I'll really be taking my chances. It's probably better for me to stay put right here at the bigger airport. United still has about, I think, four more flights today to New York. 
and I was asking the gate agent, nice gate agent earlier, he said that the 12 o'clock flight is a little more open. So, fingers crossed, y'all. As long as I'm in New York tomorrow by 3 p.m., it's all good. I have to be at work at 4 something, so we'll see. Well, they only had one seat, one seat available. There's a couple, there's a few couples listed. Actually, and I was getting hopeful that they were all gonna say, never mind, never mind, and then it was gonna trickle down to me. But no, a husband and wife is letting his, his wife in the wheelchair get on this flight, so. Yep, back to the waiting game. <laughs> okay, so the next dilemma is, it's two flights. There's one at 9.55 and one in 10.16, but they're in two different terminals. I am the United one is at 1016 then there's the Delta one at 955 who should I take my chances with y'all because I can't be in two terminals at the same time and there's just not enough time in between to get back and forth like if I don't make the 955 trying to get from there to the 1016 I'll probably end up being late even if I can get on either one so I think I might take my chances with Delta and see what happens. Uh, if not, we just gonna. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take my chances with Delta, but that means I gotta go to the whole different terminal, Terminal A now. Take the little SkyTrain thing and see what happens. It's the same rude gate agent that was here at 6 a.m. this morning that's working this flight too. I kind of gave him like a little bit of toot, only because he gave me toot. So now I have to fix my face and go be nice and ask the man to list me for the flight. But I don't want to. But I'm going to put on a smile, act like he's a customer on my flight, and just fake it till I make it. So here we go again. It's time to board the flight. I can't see how many people are listed for this flight, but it's a smaller plane, so it looks like a lot of people are here. I'm tired. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to sit here, pray and hope. I'm like I've been praying and hoping all day that I get on one of these flights. If not, the next flight isn't until... 1225 and 1230 United and Delta both have 1230 flights if this one doesn't work out I'm gonna go somewhere and take a nap because I'm tired I've been up since 4 a.m. oh yeah no luck here they're trying to get people to give up their seats for compensation so. <laughs> maybe I need to start looking into different routes I might have to do a connecting flight, which I hate, but we'll see. So, that <laughs> didn't work out. This is turning into the longest day ever. So, I'm just going to take my chances and make my way back to Terminal E, the flight that leaves at 1016. It's right now, it's 946, so that flight is probably boarding as we speak, but you just never know. So, gotta stay hopeful. <laughs> Please hold on. The train is approaching Terminal B. Por favor, subíquese bien. El tren se acerca en Terminal B. Definitely getting my workout in today, walking up and down these terminals. And of course, every gate I go to is far as heck. I think I'm just going to stick with United. Um, because at least with United, they have bigger aircraft, so maybe more seats would be available. The Delta planes are their regional planes, so 100 seats, you know, not enough. Yeah, I'm just going to stick it out on this side of the airport. No more back and forth. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Well, they've boarded.
boarded another flight. They had four empty seats and the four first people on the list got on. So now they're just trying to, I guess they're just waiting for to do the final boarding and see how many more empty seats they have and see if they can get us on. But I don't know how good my chances are. 15. Well, I guess 11 now. So I doubt they have 11 seats, but it doesn't even look like that's that many people here waiting. So I don't know y'all, we'll see. Um, I was so sleepy early. I was like, I could go back home and then try it again tomorrow and just find my airline there so I can make sure I could at least get a jump seat. Um, but that's pushing it because that flight wouldn't get in until like 3.30 p.m. And I have a report of like 4.54. So, you know, delays and anything could happen. So that would just really be taking my chances. But that's really the only thing that I can do if I'm not able to get on a flight tonight. I think the last flight tonight leaves like 7 something p.m. So that'll mean I have spent a full day at the airport just waiting. But hey, it's part of the life. This is my first time ever really having to go through this, so I'm not that mad. Like, it is what it is. But I don't want to have to end up like calling out or dropping my trip. That's what I'm, I don't want to do. So I need to get to New York ASAP. Okay, y'all, now I'm getting restless because I've been here since 6 a.m. and it's like 12.30 now. <laughs> Feels like it's 9 p.m. I'm exhausted so I'm trying to look at different routes so I might have to do from Houston to Fort Lauderdale and worst case scenario if I get on the Fort Lauderdale flight and it doesn't get in until like 10 p.m. tonight I can stay the night with my aunt and then catch the first flight out to New York in the morning and my airline flies out of Fort Lauderdale so I should be good with that I'm gonna try a little bit longer for another flight just straight to New York on Delta. United, I've kind of just given up on them because they just keep rolling over more and more and more people. It's just like, good God. So yeah, keep you updated. So back to Delta, I'm trying to get on a flight to LaGuardia. I'm tired y'all. My mom just called me. She's like, did you make it to New York yet? Girl. <laughs> we just had a good laugh. I'm third on the standby list. It's a full flight again, so fingers crossed. I'm just like three seats. Like, please, just three seats. That's all I need right now. Just three. Please. <laughs> all right. It's another flight. <laughs> Didn't get on. It was completely full. No empty seats, so... Back to United. I just feel like a joke today, honest to God. Like this is just this this ain't life. This ain't even real. Colorado Springs. I'm looking at like any gate that I'm passing by, like, hmm, can I catch a connector flight out of there? <laughs> so there was a girl that was at the gate and she was looking at the loads for me. She said the 6 50 p.m. flight has 10 open seats and nobody's listed for it as of right now. So that may be my best option, but that will literally mean I've been at the airport for 13 hours. 13 hours. <sighs> Yo, the things you do to live this lifestyle, I tell you, like, oh my gosh, you get to just hop on a flight and go for free? Oh, that's so awesome. No, it ain't that awesome. I'm down, down to United, and somehow that list grew like crazy and I was like number 27 on the list so I'm done I'm done with United for the day they're insane <sighs> the Delta flight is 6 30 p.m. has about 10 open seats so we're gonna pray for that I'm just gonna go over there sit down and chill and hope that I can get on that flight and then if not I'm gonna go home and then we're gonna take my beautiful airline to work tomorrow It's official y'all I have been defeated it is 7 p.m. I have officially been at this airport 
for 13 and a half hours and didn't get on one plane, not even a foot on the jet bridge, okay? So I'm gonna head home, get to spend one more night with Aspen and Din Din, and then I'm going to go to the other airport tomorrow. But yeah, I'm gonna go to my airport, my airport. I'm gonna go to the other airport tomorrow that my airline flies out of. And I've already listed for that flight, and I believe I am the first flight attendant listed. So regardless of if the flight is full, I'll still at least be able to sit in the jump seat to get to work, unless somebody super passes me, and then that's a whole nother story. But goodness, it's been a long day. I made a new friend though. I made a new little Delta friend that lives here in Houston, so we're gonna go do lunch one of these days. Um, she even had to wait for four flights to finally get on one. She finally made it on the last one, the last person. So I think I've explained this to y'all before, but the way that it works is that with, I believe like United, Delta, American, I'm not sure about American, but when you list yourself for the flight, it all goes by seniority. And, um, and they have all these different priorities of people. So like, you have your revenue people, that's people that have bought a ticket, and then employees, and then you have um, retired people, and then you have um, buddy passes, and then you have other airlines, which is me. So when I list on other airlines, I am the last priority. And so since these airlines do it by seniority, regardless of how long I've been listed, every time somebody else lists, even if it's for a new flight or the next flight or whatever, they go above me. So even if I was the next person to get on the last flight, it basically all starts over again, depending on who all has listed for this flight. So that's what was happening today. I just kept getting bumped down, 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 and down. So luckily my airline doesn't do it. We do it by who's checked in first, and that's the end of that. We still have our different priorities, so you go in priority order, um, and then whoever checks in first. So I'm the first person checked in on my airline, for my airline. Um, so yeah, but we do these things called super passes that we get like once a year, but I don't have any super passes yet because I haven't been with my company a year yet. So super pass is exactly what it sounds like, like if the flight is like crazy booked, you know, if the flight is like full, and there's a lot of people listed, you can use your super pass to get to the top of the list. That's the only way you can jump ahead of somebody on my airline. What a day, y'all. But we'll try it again tomorrow. We're going to get to New York tomorrow. Bye. All right, good morning, everybody. So we are trying this again today. It should be very simple. <laughs> I'm at Hobby Airport in Houston, Texas. I checked the list again this morning and there's one person above me, they have a different priority, but it says there's two seats available on the plane. I'm the first employee listed, first jump seat approved employee listed also. So we're on the smaller aircraft. I didn't even realize that. So it's only the 100 seater. So there's only one extra jump seat and it's mine. <laughs> so let me get to the gate and hopefully get to New York and be able to get to work on time. So it's time. It's an hour before boarding. I mean, it's an hour before departure. Gate agent just got here. I just checked the list. I'm number one. I don't know what happened to the person before me, but now I'm number one and there's two seats open. So, you know, after this struggle today, I might feel like blessing somebody because there's a list of six people or five or something and I might just take the jump seat so at least two people can get on. I might be that nice person today because after yesterday's AT double hockey sticks, you know, it just sucks to be sitting around trying to get on a flight. So if I can do something nice for somebody today, I will. That'll be my good deed of the month or the week or the day. <laughs> okay, so I made it on board and I did decide to be nice and bless somebody today a family, a husband and wife. So I'm taking the jump seat and I gave them the seat since they can't jump seat, obviously. 
Hey guys, made it in my jump seat. We're about to take off. Thank you all for watching this vlog. I hope you got a really good insight on what it can truly be like to commute, especially on some of those bigger airlines where there's so many people listed and everything is by seniority. Anyways, until next time, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye!